You're now watching a clip from the Mark West Sports Podcast. Let's jump into the Benjamin Report. You got anything to report? I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the rankings came out. I, I put those out. The fact that Cardinal Gibbons went up to Venice and, like, won a game. Yeah, after which losing. Was, which was great. Yeah, yeah after losing, losing American back. Heritage. And um, that, so it really put a, a lot of uh, parity uh, in who the best team in the state is. But uh, St. Thomas and Dillard was actually a really good game that, that I went to last week. Dillard. Is a really strong squad. One of the, I think, the best defensive end in South Florida. Nigel Lee Kelly got hurt in this game, came back. He had, he had his shoulder on ice for most of the, for, for like half of the first half. And then came back in the second half, got a sack, type of a loss. So it shows, you know, kind of the grit that he has. I mean, as far as his recruitment, I, I think it's still – a two-team race with Florida State and Miami. Um, there's a lot of other teams that could be in the mix as well. But as far as, like, the, the home state teams, those two are, are still actively trying to get at Nigel Lee Kelly. Uh, so St. Thomas, to me, and Chaminade are the two teams, to me, that are going to win state championships. Like I can confidently say that those two teams are gonna win. What do you buy, what, what do you like about both teams though? St. Thomas, they got the quarterback Zion Turner, who's I think is the probably the best overall quarterback in South Florida right now. Okay. Uh, you got Anthony Hankerson, one of the best running backs in all of Florida. I think uh, his build is very similar to like a Maurice uh, Jones Drew. He's got a compact frame, but he can get you yards after uh, the contact, and he can catch the ball out, out of the backfield. So, that th I mean, those two players, I, I think, are really kind of the standouts on offense or really kind of make the difference for that team offensively. On defense, uh, you got Darion Craig, who's always um, around the football, making tackles. Cameron Hussey uh, is also a player who's making plays in the, in the, in the defensive backfield. Chaminade is all about that O-line, bro. We, you know, we've been talking O-line a lot. <laughs> you know, they O-line is massive. And they got a really good running back in Davion Gus, who we call Bullet. Um, he is just that. He just, you know, gets through the gets through the hole fast. And you got to get a, get two tacklers on him to bring him down. Davion Gust? Like a Goss. Gust win? Oh, I thought you said like yeah. Gust win. What team do you think got the better coach? The better coach? Mm -hmm. That is a good question. Uh, as far as coaching staff, yes, staff. I would probably say you can't you can't say that St. Thomas is not doesn't have the best coaching staff. Jason Taylor is on the staff. That's why I asked the question. Like <laughs> a Hall of Famer is is the D coordinator. I mean, you know, it's all you about know, Miami. The staff, yeah, yeah. I mean, they got a great staff at Chaminade as well. I think if it's a head coaching. Situation, I I think I would go with Shamanad's coach, Damian Jones. But when you talk about overall as, with coaching staff and as everything. As far as, like, if I need to win a game, you can tell he uses his uh, – the like, he, he uses his players in a way where he can win games mm. consistently year after year. I got to give it to him and what he does with Shamanad. Um Coach Harriet is, is a great coach, too. Um, he, you know, is an alum of St. Thomas Aquinas and, um, you know, played there and, and has brought several championships to St. Thomas. So you can't put anything past Coach Harriet and, and his staff and, and what he does for, for that school. He's able to really take the torch from George Smith and really kind of carry that on. George Smith is a legendary coach down here in South Florida. Um, so, so yeah, Roger Harriet, um, I would say definitely one of the best coaches in South Florida by far. Okay. But, um, but yeah, Chaminade to me, 3A team. So they small Chaminade Madonna right off of 441 to Hollywood, basically, you know, 
is is a team that is just so great to watch. They last night beat a beat an undefeated team in Lakewood pretty handily, and they're gonna be the the easy favorite to win the sta- win states in three A. Now okay. every other class to me is up for grabs though. Eight A is up for grabs. Six A is up for grabs. Five A is up for grabs. Four A is probably the most competitive with Gibbons, Coco, Gulliver. You know, Bulls, all good teams. But um, based on that win last week by Cardinal Gibbons, you got to put them back in the front because I had Venice as my number one team for weeks, and then Cardinal Gibbons goes up there and beats Venice. So they're in the mix as well to, to win the state title. As far as South Florida teams, the South Florida sweep is still potentially in, in, the, in effect. I mean, it still could happen. Pahokee is good in 1A. Champagne Yacht, you know, is always going to be uh, uh, a contender in 2A. Chaminade, obviously, in 3A. Gibbons and Gulliver in 4. Um, and then you got 5A with uh, Tampa Jesuit and Northwestern. And then you got Central, Central American Heritage. Those two teams are, are are the favorites, but you don't know who's gonna win. Okay. You know, so I don't know. Central looks like they're back to being that that green machine that they are, and because last night they blew out North, uh, not last night, but Thursday night they blew out Oof, Miami down. Northwestern forty nine to six, okay. and that's pretty embarrassing to Miami Northwestern. You know, Miami Central, I think is probably the biggest blow blowout in that game in about over a decade that's that's probably the biggest rivalry in Dade County Miami Central versus Miami Northwestern and Central made it look easy against them so they look like they're back they got two formidable quarterbacks in uh Tullock Dylan Tullock and in uh Kayon Jenkins they call him lights out so I think Central definitely has a chance to win win it all of course st thomas in 7a and 8a is always you know it's the biggest class but it's always the mystery from down here in south florida i don't think columbus is the team i don't think deerfield is the team that's going to do it the really the best team is, is palmetto but they 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 rely on two players probably maybe too much they're two great players in mike williams and and g7 but you know how much are you can you depend on them to win games against you know, the Venices of the world or the, uh, you know, the uh, Treasure Coasts of the world um, the, the, or, the, or Seminole. Those three teams, not from South Florida, I think would beat any any uh, South Florida team. So so that's, that's pretty much the, the Benjamin report. I mean, um, also, Kenyatta Jackson, I do want to say, did commit to Ohio State within the past two weeks. And you know, um, you know, he's he's one of those players that Miami missed on. But one of those players that they could gain for next season is Ruben Bain. I had a chance to talk to him on Thursday night and he loves Miami, you know, like to, to play for Miami would would be, you know, the ideal situation for him. Uh, he's been to a couple of games um, already. And I think, um, you know, that if, if Miami can continue to win, they can get that type of player. And he's a beast. He, he was all over the field against Miami Northwestern. He can play inside or outside on the D-line. He's just a beast and he's a good kid. So okay. that's, that's the type of player. Ruben Bain, that's the type of player that um, the Hurricanes can potentially get if they continue to win. More pieces to the puzzle. All right, now... Uh, there's like two...